Welcome back to the Prince Armory Studio. In this video, I'm going to be 3D printing a full-sized mannequin using the Elegoo Orange Storm Giga. And normally I don't need that many mannequins at once, since all of our custom projects get shipped to clients when they're done. But now that we're building suits for the academy that stay in the studio when they're done, I find myself starting to play musical chairs with some of the suits and mannequins. Most mannequins tend to wear out and I've gone through so many of them over the years, so I'm excited to play with a large format printer like this. It'll give us some new options when displaying our armor and costume creations. Elegoo sent us an early production unit of their Orange Storm Giga to test out. The obvious defining feature of this printer is that it's massive. The build plate is 800 by 800 and it's a thousand millimeters high. And I believe this is the first printer of this size that is positioned to bridge the gap between the consumer market and the larger industrial machines that can cost in the tens of thousands of dollars. We'll probably also start getting 3D scans of our custom order clients and start printing dress forms to their exact dimensions when patterning out suits of armor for them. This printer arrives in two large boxes, and I've seen plenty of other channels make unboxing and setup videos on this printer, so I won't go into full detail on that here, but I do have a few tips to share with anyone who does own this printer or who is interested in getting one. First, the power switch is at the back bottom of the unit, so I got a wireless switch and a remote to stick up at the front. Next, I suggest you get a USB extension cable and run it up to the top. I've seen a lot of people complain about how they don't want their USB sticking out from the front, but if you look behind the pillar, there is a secondary USB slot where you can plug in the stick or the extension cable. The Giga is pretty heavy, so if you do have to move it around, I suggest getting some cheap furniture moving dollies like this to help make the job easier. And for anyone who received one of the early access units like this, I've seen some content creators having issues, and I had a few issues myself getting started. But after updating to their latest UI and firmware, it seems like the complaints I would have had are now addressed. I realize a printer like this isn't for everyone, but for some it'll open up a lot of doors. At the time of this video I think it's currently available for pre-order, and possibly by the time you watch this video it may be available. I'm also glad to see that they enabled the filament runout detection to be toggled on at startup by default. Alright, so let's get this print going. The model I'm using is one that I found online and modified a bit, and this mannequin design is certainly not optimized for 3D printing. This is mostly for learning at this point, but possibly in the future I'll design something for the community, or maybe someone out there already has designed some functional mannequins for cosplay and armor stands. If so, let us know in the comments. We'll start with the base and work our way up. I chopped the build up into a bunch of parts. I don't think this defeats the purpose of using a larger 3D printer because the parts are still wider or larger than most other printers can do. I think in the future, now that I'm more confident with this printer, I could do a similar print in two parts. For most of the print, I think I used the 0.6mm nozzle. And for the arms, I went up to 1mm just to see how it looked. For most of the print, I used 4-5 to five wall thicknesses, and I actually used a lot of different infill percentages for the sake of experimentation. So what do you guys think? Would you want a 3D printed mannequin for your own armor and cosplay creations? Think of all the cool poses you could design compared to the traditional mall retail style mannequins that we've all been stuck with for decades. You guys would have to let me know what you would print with this, or what you think we should try printing next. I didn't design all the parts to interlock in a technical way. I just wanted to make sure the concept would work before spending all that time, so I'm just going to glue and tape the parts together for now. I'm using some two-part epoxy to attach the mounts for the arms. And here I'm gluing up the legs.
and to hold the torso and upper legs in place, I'm just going to use some sturdy gaffer tape. And the first wardrobe to dress this mannequin will be the foam version of the berserk armor that we're working on. This suit is built as a prototype for the leather version of the suit. And if you want to learn how to make either version, just check out some of the related videos on the Prince Armory channel. When I first started making this video, I had some suggestions for Elegoo on this device, but since the firmware update, these are no longer issues. If I had to offer some other suggestions for the Giga, it would just be some quality of life features, such as consider providing extension wires for the filament runout detector so that we can reverse the back and top front bar braces with the threaded screws for the spool holder, or find some other way to make it easy to change the positions of the spool holders and filament detectors. Second, consider offering a full-size build plate, even if it is an add-on purchase. And third, consider building in a power switch and USB plug into the top pillar where the screen lives anyway. And lastly, I think there are bed leveling sensors available these days that are faster than the hunt and peck style of probing. I don't know much about them, I've never used them, but if it's possible, I think this would be an awesome upgrade. But overall, I think the Giga is a solid product, and I'm excited that companies like Elegoo are trying to bring concepts like this within the reach of consumers and small studios. I'm definitely going to be making some cool projects with it in the future. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.